I hit a thousand subscribers and it is mind blowing. I still can't believe that there are so many of you that uh, want to stick around and hear me talk about books, but hey, here we are. So thank you each and every one of you for showing up, watching my videos, liking, subscribing, and most of all commenting, because when you comment, that's when it becomes a two-way conversation. So from the bottom of my heart to each and every single one of you, Thank you very much. So today's video will be a little bit special because you had questions and I have answers. <laughs> Let's start with the impossible question. Now, favorite genre is an easy one. Um, I used to be a heavy fantasy reader when I was like in my teens, but gradually with growing older, um, things mellowed down a bit. So I read a whole lot of things really. My go-to genres are, of course, still fantasy, but also literary fiction, magical realism, and even crime, even a good whodunit when it's written uh, very well. So I don't really have one particular um, favorite genre, but I can pick from uh, a few. We all know what's not my favorite genre. That's an easy one. Um, it is romance. I don't do contemporary romance, as you might know if you've been following me on this channel. And then there's that impossible question. My favorite book. Don't make me choose. Please don't make me choose because I've been thinking about this and every time I think, okay, that's the one, my mind says, yeah, but what about this one or that one or, you know, the one you read the other day? So no, I, I'm not going to pick and I'm going to go with a very corny answer um, here. My favorite book is the book I'm going to read next. You know that special feeling when you find a book in the bookstore and it looks really interesting, it's a beautiful edition, you take it home with you and then there's that moment that you sit down, might become a DNF, might become a huge disappointment, but in that moment it is probably the best book in the world. So if I have to choose or if I have to call one book then it is the book that I'm going to read next because at that particular time, it's the best book in the world. Things I want to achieve. Um, when it comes to this channel, I still see myself as an absolute newbie uh, when it comes to YouTube and with every video I make and every other video I see from different people, I learn new things. So if there is something of an ambition here is to keep on learning, keep on becoming better, keep on adding new things to videos, um, yeah, just become a better YouTuber, I guess. The logical next step for this channel will be to aim for that uh, YouTube partnership so I can start earning a bit of um, advertising revenues. This will not change anything at all for the viewers, but it will allow me to reinvest that money into the channel, you know. Better tripod, some extra ring lights, um, external camera, things like that. It would just be nice if the channel started to uh, pay for itself. I don't really have like a business plan for, for the whole uh, channel. I like where it's now. I like the uh, organic growth that I'm seeing. I don't need to go viral and gain a thousand followers overnight just to lose another 900 uh, the next day. So no, I'm liking this steady, easy growth and I like the fact that I'm still able to answer each and every comment that I get. I um, really love the dialogue. I really love interacting with people, talking about books. So yeah, I really, really enjoy um, this ever-growing community and the time that I get to spend with you. That's what um, social media is concerned. Personally, um, if this is like a bucket list thing, um, when I was uh, much younger, 20, 25 years ago, I did do a lot of mountaineering, a lot of climbing, a lot of um, multiple day hikes, things like that. Uh, but then, you know, life starts to happen. You, you get married, um, there's a kid on the way, uh, you stay home, you have responsibilities, there is a job, things like that. And then never really, really got into it again. But I would still like to think that there is at least one big mountain left uh, in me. 
top 10s, um, top 10 favorite books of all time and top 10 of uh, best books of the 21st century. These will be videos in their own right, I guess. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick um, top of the mind uh, top three for you. Um, best books of all times. Um, to the Lighthouse, Virginia Woolf comes to mind. Uh, for me, still one of the best examples of stream of consciousness, one of the best experiments uh, ever done in literature without being a pompous git like James Joyce. Then I would have to say um, as a second book, the Great Gatsby, Scott Fitzgerald, uh, absolutely love that book. Excellent, excellent um, timepiece for what the USA was uh, in that particular era in the 20s. Going ever faster, ever bigger, ever larger and people struggling to keep up. Um, so yeah, definitely The Great Gatsby. Um, number three, I'm going to go with 100 Years of Solitude by um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, again, love the book. Um, not uh, the easiest uh, to read. Takes a, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, it helps if you uh, keep notes and, and the whole family tears uh, next to you. But what a great book. I mean, absolutely love it. Um, absolutely love magical realism. So yeah, uh, that would be my top three uh, of all times uh, on top of my head. Then 21st century, <laughs> this is going to be even more difficult. Um, I would say Babel. Babel is 21st century. Um, Rebecca F. Kwang's uh, Babel is a dark academia book um, about the disaster that was uh, colonization. Um, it is an absolute masterpiece. Love it, reread it, um, find something different each time I do. And I will keep rereading it um, for many years to come, I'm sure. Then I'm going with um, a graphic novel. I'm going with uh, Persepolis by Marianne uh, Satrapi, who is a um, Persian author from uh, nowadays Iran. And she describes the whole growing up as a girl, as a young girl, as a teen um, in Iran, fleeing the um, religious oppression over there, but also struggling with um, with her teens, really, and, and being a young woman or becoming a young woman. Um, absolutely love that book. It is an absolute masterpiece of a graphical novel. So yeah, um, Persepolis should definitely be up there uh, for the 21st century. And I still think it is 21st century if I'm calculating um, back to the time I was studying. I'm going with a non-fiction book here. I'm going with um, The Silent Takeover by Norina Hertz. You might have heard of Naomi Klein who wrote uh, books on globalism, um, neoliberalism, how market uh, principles work, things like that. Um, and I never really, really got into Naomi Klein because she had a bit of a rock star attitude, I guess. I much preferred uh, Norina Hertz, who is a uh, professor in economy. Um, she actually uh, helped to um, found the Russian Stock Exchange, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But she also became um, very aware of all the faults that neoliberalism as a system has. So she wrote uh, The Silent Takeover and um, the dangers of neoliberalism, the dangers of mega corporations, things like that. Absolutely love that book, absolutely love Norina Hertz. She's a very educated, erudite writer. She knows what she's talking about, which is a feeling I didn't always have with Naomi Klein. So yeah, if you're interested in all of that, um, it is a bit aged by now, I guess, because I think it is 2001, 2002, some, something like that. But The Silent Takeover by uh, Norina Hertz is still one of my all-time favorite non-fiction books. Favorite fall, favorite spooky reads? Well, it is autumn. Favorite fall, I immediately think of two books. Um, the Secret History by Donald Tartt is a book I think I reread every fall. It has those fall vibes. It is dark academia. It is a book I love rereading. I love annotating, although I am not much of an annotator. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely a fall staple. Um, another one is uh, The Movable Feast by Hemingway. 
Um, it is a bit of a memoir. It is actually a sort of diary where Hemingway describes um, the fall in Paris uh, when he is living there. And it is an absolutely beautiful atmospheric book. Um, it brings Paris in fall, in autumn to life. You can almost imagine yourself sitting um, somewhere in a cafe uh, with a decent coffee, looking outside, rain is pouring. Absolutely love that book. So yeah, those are probably my two uh, favorite fall reads. And then the, my favorite spooky read. I'm not much of a horror reader, um, but when I do, I do like my horror to be deeply psychological. I'm, I'm a fan of what Hitchcock does in his movies, where he doesn't really show what's happening um, and he leaves it up to your own imagination to fill in the blanks, which is always, always much more um, horrifying than when he would actually show, show something. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a psychological horror fan and so... I would go with the works of H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Um, Lovecraft, and I guess I will be doing a movie on him soon, probably somewhere um, by Halloween, was an American author. Um, he wrote the Cthulhu Mythos. Um, it is a bit of an acquired taste. It is a bit of a cult uh, book, but it has gained so many fans over the years, and I am one of them. It is about a very, very tiny, insignificant humans that we are um, in the grand um, scheme of the cosmos where much much bigger things go uh, bump in the night so um, we'll be doing a video on that for sure sometime soon hp lovecraft is for me the best spooky reads there out there love 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 that question I actually wrote my dissertation on um, what we would call today middle grade and uh, young adult literature and how they contribute to um, social and personal development of children. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely love children's books. Um, if I have to pick a favorite, it would probably be this one. It is a Dutch one. Don't think it is translated. And it is a, actually a poetry collection. Um, the title would roughly translate what to do if you stumble on a hippo. Um, and it is, it is basically that. It is a collection of uh, poems that give advice to young children um, for those everyday problems you have, like you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you trip over a hippo. What do you do? Absolutely love this book, but there are many, many great examples. Uh, Wind in the Willows comes to mind. Um, Little Prince comes to mind. The Never Ending Story comes to mind. There are so many great examples, but if I had to pick one, what to do if you trip over a hippo? Right, so here's the thing. I love rereading books because I find um, every time I reread a book, I take something different from it. Especially if you reread a book after 10 years, after 20 years, you've changed, your life has changed and you start to find different things, things that are important to you now that might not have been, been important 10 years ago. So I wouldn't really want to erase my memory. I just want to keep on building on uh, my rereads. But there is perhaps one. And I would go for Lord of the Rings. I would love to be able to read Lord of the Rings again for the first time, not knowing the plot, not having seen any of the movies and just reliving that sense of wonder and adventure and wanting to know what comes next and did they survive and will they escape? And I think I'll read just one more chapter with a light under my covers so uh, my parents don't notice, yeah. So yeah, I think I would go with Lord of the Rings uh, just to relive the moment, relive uh, the book. Although I do love my rereads. Now that is most definitely a video in its own right, I think. Um, so yeah, let me know if you would love to see um, a bookshelf tour video somewhere in the future. Let me know down below in the comments. Um, and yeah, who knows, I might uh, take you all around um, all of the books because to be honest, I don't think 
There are many rooms in this house that don't contain books. Um, it's not just what you see behind me. There's also a box in the kitchen, in the living room, in the bedroom. So yeah, if you want a bookshelf tour, let me know in the comments and we might work on that in the future. Uh, my 10-year-old uh, son definitely does. Uh, he shares my love uh, for books and he reads even faster and more than I do. Um, he absolutely loves reading. He has his own collection, his own bedroom is just stacked with books. Um, so yeah, he's, he's definitely my son. Do I read things um, because he's uh, very, very uh, giddy about it? Not really, it is, it is the other way around in most cases um, where I recommend books to him um, because I know his taste, I know what he will like, I know what he will dislike, so I can really pinpoint those books that I know um, from my youth or my dissertation um, that he will love uh, and in most cases he does and then we can talk about them and we can, you know, uh, be, be all uh, fan fiction about them, come up with our own stories, so absolutely love that. Um, we all love books, but the most uh, dedicated readers are uh, my son and me, myself. It is not a boring question. In fact, it's far from a boring question. Um, yeah, I did study. The short answer is a lot. Let's see, I first did my um, teacher's degree in um, Dutch, English and history, um, specializing in literature. Then went, went on to um, study communications, uh, specialized in advertising. Went to work in advertising um, for BBDNO, one of the, the big uh, global advertising agencies, um, and stopped studying at that point. Did that for a few years. The advertising world, although I love the job, I love the content of the job, was not really for me. After that, I got offered the um, opportunity to work for the government and did that for the next 15, 20 years or so. First, I uh, worked in policy. I helped uh, coming up with uh, policy for culture and arts and theater and libraries and things like that. And then, um, after that, I became the head of legal quality control, of all things. Um, so yeah, I did that for a long while. Um, and that also granted me the opportunity to um, go out and study again. So after that, I did um, a postgraduate in what was officially called international relations and intercultural communication. That's the thing. I am one of those people when I'm um, confronted with something I don't know, don't understand or don't master the skills. I go out and I start researching, I start studying and I start qualifying in that. And one night I came home uh, from work. There was a man on the platform in the train station who had a heart attack and I was um, confronted with the fact that I didn't know how to help him. Didn't have the knowledge, didn't have the skills. Uh, at that point, I decided I'm going to learn CPR, did a whole first aid course. It ended with me doing uh, going to paramedic school. I ended up um, as a paramedic. I'm a fully qualified paramedic. Um, did some um, extra specializations, specialized in uh, disaster relief. Don't do that uh, anymore now because um, I've got a bad back. But yeah, that was a thing. I did also a degree in uh, floristry. I am, um, again, a qualified florist. Why did I do that? Because I was interested in it. It's, it's getting silly at this point. So yeah, I studied a lot because, to be honest, I like studying. Then uh, job-wise, at this moment, um, I'm doing something totally different. Five years ago now, we decided that I was going to stay home and become um, a full-time stay-at-home dad. Although I prefer the term domestic goddess. It has been an absolute game changer for everyone in this household. And it actually allows me to do things like this. So yeah, never expected I would love it, but yeah, I do. <laughs> Do I know much about books? Honestly, I don't think so. I'm not someone who um, 
studies all of the publishers' websites and knows which version um, will be available in which bookstores at what time. I don't follow those things. I will say one thing, one absolute magical talent that I possess is I am very good at picking uh, personalized gifts for people. I can really pair people with the gifts they want, even if they don't know it. So I guess it's the same with books. I'm really good at knowing what books people would like. I will say that I've been reading for a very, very long time. I've always been a reader um, for as long as I can remember from a little child on all the way up to today. So I guess I have the experience of having read a lot of books. Having studied literature probably helps, I don't know. And I think keeping an open mind. I might joke about uh, not doing uh, romance, but I will read almost any genre with an open mind and, and honestly say what I think about it. No idea if I know a lot about books, but hey, thank you. <laughs> Last question and perhaps my favorite one. And I will say I have been spending way too much time thinking about this one for the last week or so. So yeah, who would I um, take for dinner and where would we eat? First I made a long list, then I whittled it down to a short list and now three remain. Of course, Terry Pratchett and I think um, Sir Terry and I would go to the pub, have something simple like a pie or Plowman's lunch, um, have a few pints over it and just, you know, talk. Talk books, talk the world, talk everything we would like and it would be an absolute delight. Then secondly, there would be Agatha Christie. Now, Agatha Christie, I, I see her in a more traveling uh, themed uh, place, perhaps somewhere on a cruise ship, on the Nile, for example. Or why not um, join her on the actual Orient Express um, for lobster dinner? And then, my absolute number one, I started thinking about Virginia Woolf. And I wasn't really sure of if I wanted to uh, go out for dinner with her because she was not the liveliest, happiest person in the world. And where would she take me? I don't know, probably the Bloomsbury house and it would be noisy and wasn't really into it. And then suddenly it hit me. What if it was a plus one event? Because then she would probably take um, Vita Sackville West with her. In fact, Vita Sackville West might even host the thing. And then it would be at uh, Sissinghurst Castle. And Sissinghurst Castle is one of my absolute favorite places to visit. Um, it was the home of uh, Vita Sackville West. She was an avid gardener just like me and the gardens over there are stunning. One of the most stunning gardens I've ever seen. Absolutely love it. And at the back of the garden there is a, even a little gazebo shed kind of thing where she would go and ride in silence looking over the British countryside. It is an absolute magical place. So yeah, I would definitely go um, for perhaps even a something like a picnic um, at Sissinghurst Castle in the gardens. Maybe we have to flee because it starts raining and then we um, find shelter in that lovely gazebo. Would be a magical, rainy, beautiful countryside uh, type of afternoon and I would absolutely love it. So those were the three I came up with and absolutely loved, uh, loved thinking about it. So those were your questions and those were my answers. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit of a different one because we hit um, a thousand subscribers. And again, thank you ever so much. And yeah, do leave a comment, do leave a like. And next week we'll be back again with normal bookish content. Thank you for watching. And in the meantime, if you need some more recommendations, you can always go here.